Hello, hello, ladies, and welcome to another episode of Inner Work for Greater Good. My name is Emily Eldridge. I am the creator of the ChangeLight system, the founder and CEO of ChangeLight. We have a community, we have a course, private coaching, all kinds of good stuff to support you in doing your inner work that accelerates your power to make a difference in the world. Whatever difference it is that you want to make, that's what we're here for, because we all have a purpose and a truth. I believe that we are here to live and the whole point is to light up because when we light up, we light up the world. So, so happy to have you. All right. So as always, we talk about feelings here uh, and I want to talk today about this question of do you have a right to feel the way you do? Do you have the right to feel this way? So... This is pretty loaded, but I'm going to give you some background about why this is even a question for me this week. Um, so I've had a situation over the past few months in which I've been, there was a transaction that needed to happen um, in order for things to move forward with something in my life. And um, so for the past few months, I've been working with this person who's supposed to provide me with information and legal documents and coordinate things for me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, unfortunately, all along the way, and I've dealt with this person before, and there have been a lot of errors before, but you know what? She's really, really nice, and she's very sweet and all that, so I you know, kind of put up with it. Um, but basically, in this past couple of months where things were really, I needed certain things, and they needed to be accurate, no mistakes, et cetera, um, unfortunately, there were just constant mistakes, constant errors that I was finding. So, you know, a legal document would come into me and there'd be like a, a mistake on the date and there'd be a mistake on the price. Um, so I'd have to send it back and that needs to be fixed. I needed information about how to do this, you know, certain activity that was related to this whole transaction. And yet I couldn't get that information or it wasn't coordinated with the right people. Um, you know, when I finally did get this contract back with certain, you know, things that were fixed, there were, there were still other errors. So, and then ultimately um, what was sort of most recent issue was that when I finally, the thing was complete, I was actually overcharged. And so it was just this really aggravating process. But here's the thing, I was not fully aware, shall we say, of exactly how aggravated I was in the series of events so as i said it's like well she's nice and well you know i sort of said to myself well it's just a little mistake here and there well you know it's just a, a time you know it's just a typo or oh well it's just this well it's just that but over time as it's like two mistakes in an email and then three mistakes in a legal document and then this and this and this and it's a constant pattern Finally, within about the last 10 days or week before this thing had to be done, I started to get frustrated and irritated and aggravated. Um, and so I talked to this person and I just said, you know, I was very kind about it, but I just said, you know, it just feels like this has been very discombobulated, disjointed, very all over the place. And, you know, things need to be settled. And the person, um, tried to tell me, yeah, but you've already got everything and it's all fine. And I'm like, but it's not because there were so many errors, et cetera. And so the point is that, but meanwhile, you know, in terms of this person, I know other people who interact with her and, you know, it didn't seem like other people were upset with her behavior. So it was this whole situation. The point is, it was a very frustrating, time consuming, time wasting, frankly, um, aggravating situation in which I, as someone else put it, you know, they said, sounds like you're taking up a lot of slack for this person. And I was, but it took me a long time to get angry about it or to really feel, finally feel that I was angry. And unfortunately, by the time I got angry, it wasn't just like, gosh, I'm really upset. It was like, oh my God, it was just like, oh, like, like, like enraged, like so mad that I was having to call people close to me and be like, I have to, I just have to talk about this or like my blood pressure is going to go through the roof. There were a number of things that 
played roles in um, in sort of what what you know what ended up happening with me emotionally. But one of the things that I asked myself was, do I have a right to feel this way? And I think that's a really important thing to notice is when we are questioning, let's say we have a feeling that comes up and we question consciously and unconsciously, do I even have a right to feel this way? Well, I don't know. And there are different ways that we do this to ourselves, right? It's like, it's like, well, I don't know. She, this or he, that. Well, it's, it's, it's these interesting sort of subtly dismissive things that we can sometimes do to ourselves that in a way are like, it's like we're gaslighting ourselves, you know? And basically making us, it's almost like trying to dismiss how we feel, but even telling ourselves, well, I'll speak for myself, telling myself that I don't know that I really have a right to feel this way. I mean, it's really not such a big deal. So I don't really know that I, well, I mean, I'm really angry, but do I really have a right to be this angry? So I think when it comes to emotions, here's my answer. And then we're going to get into some of this stuff. Number one, of course you have a right to feel the way you feel. Here, there are several reasons why I say that. One, because first of all, and if, and if anything, I would say it's not even a question. It's like, it's not even about whether or not you have the right to feel this way. It's more about what's the reality? This is how you feel. This is how you feel. Now, are you 100% justified? This is how you feel. And the other thing too, and we're going to get into like reasons why we feel a certain way, but this is how you feel. So that's the reality. So what's the point of even fighting with that reality? Well, do I have a right? Well, whether or not you have a right, this is how you feel. And the problem too with asking ourselves, if, do I have a right to feel this way? Is that if we're having an emotion coming up, then, then if there's some inner struggle, there's something that's causing some kind of stress or pain or fear or what have you inside of us. But then when we ask ourselves, do I have a right to feel this way? Oftentimes, that actually can add to the pain and the struggle because we're questioning whether or not it's okay for us to feel the way we do as opposed to, I'm feeling this way. Hmm, what do I do with this? Or I wonder why. And so I even want to take issue with this question, just the fact of the question of asking yourself whether or not you have the right to feel this way. So that's something I want to look at. Also, I think it's important for us to even quit ask ourselves, why do we even ask ourselves if I have the right to feel this way? And I found that there are a number of reasons. And I've already kind of talked about what, you know, some of the things that I did to myself. One of them is that oftentimes, and I realized in my case, this is definitely the situation, often we've been taught to dismiss our own feelings. So why do we even ask ourselves the question of, do I have a right to feel this way? Well, because you've basically been given that message of that maybe you don't, that maybe you don't have a right to feel this way. So you start to ask yourself, well, do I have a right to feel this way? That can be one big reason. And interestingly enough, some circumstances came together that helped me recognize where that tendency for me comes from. It's someone in my life. And I saw this person's behavior and how they behaved towards me as I was dealing with this situation. And I went, oh, that's where, okay. Because the way they're reacting to me talking about this is the way I was treating myself all the way along. Aha. Uh -huh. So this person, it's not that they were actively dismissing my feelings, but they were trying to placate and try to calm me down, even though I wasn't really upset in the moment. It was like, well, but everything's fine now. And well, you know, and all, all this, well, well, instead of saying, gosh, you know what, this is frustrating and I'm really sorry you're frustrated and I can see why you're so frustrated. You see, instead of validating and honoring how I was feeling, there was all this, well, I don't, you know, that was not ill, Ill willed or ill intended, but I realized that that was basically the, that, that what the way that person was treating me was the mechanism that I had internalized and was doing to myself. 
So that's a good thing to understand. So we dismiss our feelings. And when we've been taught to dismiss our feelings, that's usually when we ask ourselves if we have a right to feel this way. Should I feel this way? Do I actually have a justifiable, rational reason for feeling this way? Another reason why we'll tend to ask ourselves, do I have a right to feel this way? Is because often because we can be in a situation where we're really upset about something. Maybe we're sad, maybe we're angry, maybe we're frustrated, maybe we're, you know, whatever. We have our emotional grieving, we have our emotional reaction to a situation. And yet, uh, other people around us are not having the same reaction. And so that's when it can cause us to question why we're, or question the fact that we're feeling this way and question whether or not we have a right to feel this way or whether we should feel this way because, well, everybody else seems okay with the situation. So uh, I don't know, is, is it okay that I feel this way? Um, do I have a right to feel this way? Especially if, um, you know, maybe it's the same situation happened to other people and yet we're the only one who's actually having that reaction. It can really cause us to question whether or not we are, we are validated in having that reaction. So it's really important when you're noticing how you feel and you're noticing your, if you have a tendency to ask yourself if you have a right or even a reason for feeling that way uh, or, uh, or if you should feel that way that you notice why you're even asking yourself that question. And is it because other people have questioned your right to feel that way? Other people have made you doubt your right or your ability, your, your right and your validity in feeling that way. If you've been surrounded by situations where, and this happens a lot in family, in family, family scenarios, for example, if there's a certain kind of abuse in the family, and yet, and it's behind closed doors, let's say, and yet to the rest of the world, everyone just thinks they're wonderful. And meanwhile, you're kind of going, this is crazy. This is not okay. Or something awful happens. And then the family just kind of moves on as though nothing happened. And you're like, that was horrible. That was terrible. That that can be that crazy making that makes us think that we're the ones who were crazy as opposed to the reality that the situation is actually crazy. And we're having a very natural human response to it. It's just that other people for their own reasons, their own agendas or their own self-protection, they might be dismissing it or acting like it didn't happen or, or diminishing, diminishing that it happened or, or diminishing their own emotional reaction to it. So those are some things is, um, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong section of my notes. So those are some things to ask yourself about why you would even question whether or not you have a right to feel the way you do, when the reality is you just feel the way you do. Um, so here's a better question is, why do I feel this way? So it starts first with acknowledging, I'm feeling this way, this is how I'm feeling. Okay. Other people might not be feeling that way. Other people may not be having the reaction that I'm, that I'm having. Other people may wanna dismiss how I'm feeling or they might, may wanna criticize me for how I'm feeling. But you start with going, but what's the reality for me right now? This is how I feel, right or wrong, justified or not or whatever. What's the reality? This is how I feel. And so you start with what is. What is, is I'm feeling anger, I'm feeling grief, I'm feeling sadness, I'm feeling fear, I'm feeling anxiety, I'm feeling defensiveness, I'm feeling whatever. And you start with just acknowledging the reality and accepting the reality as it is and not questioning, just owning it, honoring it. Um, then it's about sitting with it. Um, I, I, I hesitate because one of the other words I like to use is just parsing it out. But first I want to talk about, talk about sitting with it. You sit with how you feel. And when I say sitting with it, I mean, you just sit and you notice and go, okay, so right now I'm feeling this emotion. Because you know what? You might also be feeling some other emotions. So for me, in terms of my situation is that I was feeling, um, I was feeling anger at the person. I, no, I was feeling anger at, anger that the details were not being dealt with appropriately. 
I was feeling kind of more sort of compassionate towards her. Well, maybe she's having a rough time. Okay. I was feeling guilty for being angry at her for not doing her job properly. I was feeling um, uh, anxious because this whole situation was taking up all this time and energy away from my work and my business. And it was adding to my lack of trust that she was gonna take care of everything and everything needs to be coordinated in order for it all to go smoothly. I was feeling, um, and then I was feeling some sadness about it because I felt kind of sad. Like, well, you know, just this is kind of sad to me that I'm in this situation where like, I like this person and yet they're not doing their job and it's causing a lot of problems for me and for other people. So it's a mixture of feelings. And so that's what I mean about sitting with it and just noticing what is. Because a lot of times when we're feeling a feeling, it's not just one, it can be a bunch of things. And all of them can coexist simultaneously. This is also something important to really remember about emotions and feelings. Sometimes we get too much into the either or, well, it's this or that, uh-uh. It can be all at the same time. It could be grief and anger. It can be sadness and fear. It could be anxiety and defensiveness. It could be all kinds of things at the same time. And so for me, I sat with it and was like, okay, what's going on with me? And to be honest with you, I'm still processing it. I haven't really processed it fully. Um, but then also another feeling that came to me was, I'm right. It was like, a, I'm justified. It was, you know, not defiant, but just like, I do have a right to feel this way. And this is, you know, this is for a reason. And then I also felt emboldened, I guess, um, not an aggressive way, but emboldened, like, well, yeah, this is, this is, you know, and I can, I can take certain actions to rectify this. Um, and so in this situation, I ended up actually going to her superior after talking to her and really getting nowhere and the, and the, and the errors kept coming. I finally talked to her superior and I said, you know, this is not okay. This is not okay. Um, this situation. And I don't normally do that. I rarely ever do that. But this time it was like, you know what, this isn't getting fixed. So I need to, I, you know, because also I didn't want that to happen to someone else. That's also a, one of my values too. I'm like, it's not just, oh, I'll just get through this and move on. It's like, I also want it to make, I want to make it better for the next person. So that was something else that I felt sort of galvanized, sort of emboldened to once I finally really honored that it's okay for me to be angry about this. And there've been a number of violations and I got some confirmation. I got some validation from other people that was helpful, but I finally felt very um, affirmed and very, um, very clear. So the point is there can be uh, a lot of different feelings in there. And there can also be a lot of wisdom underneath that emotion. And so what I always recommend that people do is you sit with it. You honor how you feel, everything you're feeling. And then of course, with my work, I always encourage people to draw it out, sit down and draw how you're feeling and write down how you're feeling and all the thoughts and all the, you know, I, all the beliefs and everything that's coming out, just get it out of you so you can actually see it for what it is instead of it rattling around inside. That's extremely important. At the same time, um, and, and at the same time, also understand that how you're feeling in this moment now, um, and this was true for me in my situation, is that your emotional reaction may be pretty specifically to this situation, right? Okay, in this present day, in this current moment, this thing happened, or recently this thing happened, and I'm having this emotional reaction or response to it. So, you may absolutely be justified in terms of you having some emotions to it, uh, or an emotional reaction to it. So going back to the question is, uh, do you have a right to feel this way? Well, yes, you may have a right, quote unquote, or it may be sort of rational or justifiable that you would have um, an angry reaction to a situation. However, another question is, is my emotional reaction in this circumstance um, proportionate to what actually happened. So in that case, so for example, if it's like, well, someone cut me off in traffic, okay. And if I'm like, 
and I'm freaking out, rage, you know, you might be like, okay, someone cut you off in traffic, everything's okay, but should you be freaking out and getting enraged and then going off and hitting other people with your car? No, I mean, so in that moment, that reaction may be an overreaction for the specific circumstance. But in that case then, okay, so then where is the emotion? Where else is it coming from? It's not just from this situation. So this is that question of why am I feeling the way I feel? So as you sit with it and you start to parse it out, this is what I mean by parsing it out, is you go, okay, some of it definitely, absolutely, this situation, it is a rational response to this situation. But then really, is there something else that's getting triggered? Could it be that there's something from my past? Could it be that there was something that had happened to me when I was a kid? Could it be that there's something that's sort of, it's been building up in me for a while? Could it be that it's like, it's not just that this guy cut me off in traffic, it's that there's all this other stuff out of my control happening in my life right now that is making me absolutely like losing my mind so that suddenly a guy cuts me off in traffic and I'm like, ah, you know, really what else is going on? And so in that case, so you're honoring the emotions, but then you're also kind of parsing it out, where are you coming from? And for example, in my case, the where it was coming from was, yes, the situation and the sort of continual aggravation, you know, of just like little issue plus little issue plus little issue. None of them are life threatening, but adding them up, they're just like, this is an insane pattern that I'm constantly having to fix and deal with. So yes, there's that. But in terms of the rage that I was feeling, part of it, was because for one thing, I had not been honoring my feelings all the way along. I kind of, you know, I, if I were to kind of go back, I'd be like, oh, well, there's a little, you know, a little feeling there. You know how they talk about like red flags, they're like, oh, I wish I paid attention to those red flags, but we're, we're so good at dismissing them. For me, it's like, you know, a little red flag, a little pink flag, or, you know, a little, little, you know, but I just kept dismissing my own feelings. So by the time this actually got to such a place where it was like, okay, this is beyond ridiculous. And I have wasted hours at a time on this situation. Then it's like, it's, it's like by the time I finally, it was like, I've been, pre I've been sort of pressing that emotion down, but then it finally exploded. So it was building up without me realizing it was building up and building up and building up and building up until, until I was just like, now mind you, that doesn't mean I went and I screamed at anybody because I don't do that. <laughs> um, in these situations, I definitely don't do that. Um, but the point is that it built up to such an extent that I ended up, actually my emotional health momentarily was just not good because I'd been denying how I was feeling all along the way. So that's another element. And then, as I mentioned, from childhood, where did that come from? It came from that tendency to sort of dismiss my own feelings and gaslight myself came from childhood. And it came from certain people in my life who treated me that way, not maliciously, but just because, well, trying to calm me down, they didn't want me to get upset or whatever, maybe because they were actually dealing with their own feelings. But the point is, is it taught me to then have that mechanism inside myself so that all of a sudden it got really, really huge. And also it was the, it was the anger at feeling gaslit also by this woman who kept going, oh, but everything's fine, but everything's fine. And I'm like, but everything is not fine. And so it's being, feeling gaslit. And then it reminded me of being gaslit as a child. So there, you know, there are all kinds of things, but see what I'm talking about? So parsing it out. So you might be having a feeling and then the moment you're angry, you sit with it, notice the anger, notice the other feelings, draw them out, write them down, really honor them, and then ask why. So it's, again, going back to this, it's not about whether or not you have the right to. You feel the way you feel. The question of do you have the right, it's more like, is this level of reaction justified for this situation? And yes, 100% it absolutely may be. And at the same time, it could be, 
that it's gotten so bad because it's triggering something from before or because you really haven't been honoring your feelings all along the way. Those can be some scenarios. That's what happened for me. But really just honoring how you feel and looking at it from those different perspectives. Something else I want to add to is that when it comes to X powers, because that's often what I bring this back to, and we're talking about, in this case, we're talking about anger, um, or at least that's what I've been talking mostly about is, is the anger. And looking at X powers, all of the X powers can feel all the different emotions. So you can have wounded that feel sadness and grief and anger uh, and frustration and aggravation, especially when they haven't been heard. They get really upset about that. And if their feelings aren't validated, they get really upset about that. You can have a controller that's angry um, or that's, um, usually the controller won't feel something so much like grief or sadness, but when it's worked with, when I work with a controller, it might end up revealing that actually that's what it feels underneath. You know, it's trying to control everything because really it's just feels so sad for you, or it just doesn't want you to feel sad. It feels sad when you're sad, etc. Defender, similar thing. It can be anger on the surface or defensiveness or blocking or superiority or arrogance or what have you. But then underneath it can be because it feels really sad or inferior or because it doesn't want you to feel the grief that's underlying all of this, or because it doesn't want you to feel anxious, so it's trying to make you feel hyper-confident. So just so you understand, when you're noticing those feelings inside, and you're noticing that different feelings are coming up, you may notice too, you probably will, that you have also different X powers inside of you that are fueling those feelings, and that are creating that kind of dynamic within you. And so you can have the defender who's really upset about the situation and the injustice or the violation, but you can also have the controller who's trying to, you know, keep everything under control and try to deal with your anxiety. You can have the wounded who's feeling very sad and hurt and dismissed and ignored, um, or it's grieving. And so the point is all of those ex powers can be there within all of those emotions. And so it's about being present with all of those, drawing them out, honoring their feelings. And like I said, you know, the, 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 the title of this talk was, do you have a right to feel how you do? And that's where I kind of go, well, once you kind of remove that layer, then you really can just be present with the reality of what it is that you feel and honor that fully because that's where the peace is. The peace is not in trying to decide whether or not your reaction is justified necessarily. The peace is in honoring the feelings and allowing them to process through and also allowing the wisdom that they're trying to tell you to come forward as well. And ultimately, that's what the anger in my situation was doing. It was trying to get me to realize that I was overcompensating for somebody else's issues and somebody else's mistakes. And that I was allowing this person's mistakes to take me away from what's really important for me that I need to be doing rather than having to, you know, deal with all this stuff. And then what also was happening too, was it was making me super anxious because then I wasn't trusting that things were getting taken care of. And so that was adding to the emotional, uh, you know, disruption as well that were making, that was making the whole process really difficult. You see, so there was wisdom in my own. Anger was trying to get me to notice what was going on and to stop dismissing my feelings about it and to take action on it, which I ultimately did. Hasn't been resolved yet. I don't know what, this, what the um, solution is going to be or the outcome is going to be. We'll see. But the point is that once I did that, this is the thing that's really important. It's like it was bothering me, bothering me, bothering me. But once I actually did something about it and I took action and I talked to the appropriate people and I got you know, gave them all the information and I, and I so far got the response that I was looking for that, that was, a, you know, justified given the situation, then it's like, oh, I felt better, you see? So the wisdom was trying to get through to me and I hadn't been listening to it. And so there is wisdom in your emotion. So it's not about whether or not you have the right to feel how you feel, you feel how you feel, honor it, notice it, sit with it, draw it out, process it, see what comes up and you're going to learn a lot about yourself, a lot about the situation, and you're going to feel so much better in the process.
Okay, thank you so much for listening. I'm so happy to talk to you. And as always, my name is Emily. My website is changelight.world. You can take the course and learn how to draw out all these inner struggles and all your gorgeous light and your gorgeous power. Okay, so take care and I will see you next week.